Alfa Romeo is one of the most evocative, innovative and dynamic brands in the motoring world. Producing some of the most iconic cars and winning some of the most famous motor races in history, including the first Formula One Grand Prix. But in recent times, the brand has been a shadow of its former self, producing rather run-of-the-mill front-wheel drive hatchbacks. And it seems like the days of the iconic Alfa Romeo are over. Until now, meet the Alfa Romeo 4C. It's the car Alfa Romeo hopes will redefine the brand as it tries to relaunch itself as a serious player in the performance luxury market again. At its core is a carbon fibre monocoque, the same sort of technology you find in supercars like the Ferrari La Ferrari and the McLaren 650S. It has a mid-mounted turbocharged engine paired with a dual clutch transmission that sends power to the rear wheels. And it's all wrapped up in a tiny, sleek body made from the latest lightweight composite materials. In other words, it's got all the key ingredients of a supercar, except one, the price. Starting at just over $89,000, the 4C comfortably undercuts the other supercars you can get from Italy. But does it live up to those on-paper expectations? Or does it fall short like so many recent Alphas? Well, from the moment you get in the 4C, it means business. There's lots of exposed carbon fibre that shows you just how serious Alfa Romeo were about making this a legitimate sports car. You look down at the pedals, you can see all the hardware behind it, which may not be the most beautifully finished look that you want from a supercar, but it just screams pure race car. It's really quite cool. One really cool touch, which is pure supercar, is you look in the rear view mirror and you can see the engine through a little window. The engine itself is a 1.7 litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol unit that produces 177 kilowatts of power and 350 newton metres of torque. Now thanks to the fact that 4C only weighs just over a tonne, it can launch the car from 0 to 100 in 4.5 seconds. And it feels every bit that fast. On this really cool twisty road we're on now with a couple of wide open straights, you can really feel just how much torque this engine's got. The six speed dual clutch transmission is a pretty slick little unit when you're on the move. The paddles are really good. They operate really sharply. So as soon as you tug on that lever, it slots over into the next cog. There's no real delay. One thing you notice when you start driving the 4C is that the steering isn't power assisted. But while it's a bit more weighty, it actually is really responsive and direct. So you can really place it on a dime when you get into the twisties. These big Pirelli tyres, this launch edition I'm driving, has staggered tyres front and rear, wrapped in Pirelli P0s. It just hangs on for dear life. It is amazing. You can just push and push and push. It really does feel like a mini supercar. It's awesome. Like most recent Alphas, it's got the DNA system, which allows you to switch between dynamic, normal, and all weather modes for the response of the engine and the gearbox. Quite frankly though, in a car like this, you really want to leave it in dynamic. It is an absolute ball. It'll hold the gears longer and just makes it a much more enjoyable experience. Of course, if you flick it into normal though, switch the gearbox to automatic mode, you can just sort of plod along. But that's not to say the 4C is perfect. It does have its little foibles because, well, it's an Alfa Romeo, and that's what they're famous for. For starters, the cabin is quite noisy. You do get a lot of engine noise, which is, when you really want to get up it, great. You can hear all the induction noise and the turbo doing its thing, but when you're just driving along on a standard bit of road, just getting from A to B, there is quite a lot of road noise and wind noise, 
and you can hear the engine quite a lot. Also, the cabin itself is quite bare. You've got a stereo, which admitted has a pretty cool dis digital display. You've got air conditioning, but that's about it. It is a pretty raw car. Especially when you consider we're driving the launch edition that is limited to only 75 examples, but costs an extra $20,000. That makes it more expensive than the entry-level Porsche Cayman, which is a much more user-friendly car. But the Porsche simply doesn't offer the same drama as the 4C, which really lives up to its mini supercar tag. If this is the sign of things to come from Alfa Romeo in the future, well then its best days could actually be ahead of it. The iconic Alfa Romeo is well and truly back with the 4C.